When you start pulling strings in an attempt to find the truth behind layers of lies and deception, and you think you have peeled off enough layers to grasp the whole concept of a secret agenda, you soon find that you still have only touched the surface. The deception is so deep and well planned that it is extremely hard to get to the bottom of. Take history as a great example. Things we learn in school, books we read, documentaries we watch. Is this what really happened? Or is it just lies or distortion of the truth? What is interesting is that the events and the persons we read about in the history books seem to coincide with the agenda of the Illuminati. Also, the heroes of the past, the great artists, the conquerors, the scientists, the great inventors, the humanitarians, the classical musicians, seem to be all connected to one secret society or another. The list goes on and on. How come that the great men we learn about, being the people who brought civilization forwards, where almost all of them initiated in occult orders, does this mean that the only people who are members of secret societies can make big changes to the destiny of mankind? Certainly not. What we learn about is the Masonic version of history. What about all the great people who are not members of secret societies? Well, if they did not work towards the New World Order and the great works of the ages, they were suppressed, killed, or excluded from the history books. Left is the biased version of history that the Masons Illuminati wants us to believe in. Why? Because the past also helps them to build the present and the future. If all of us believe in the biased version of history, if that is all we know, then the logical continuation will be that most of us are willingly following the Illuminati toward their ultimate goal, only because it is logical. It just falls naturally. Because that's the way the flow goes. So here they have a timeline, an illusion of reality, in a hand-picked and subjective excerpt of what really happened, neatly put together in books and mainstream media to teach us nothing else but how the New World Order came into place. The rest, how brave men and women tried to resist evil and how brilliant minds were trying to lead people to better lives, have been conveniently excluded or biased in a way that most people look like the bad guys. American Indians is a perfect example. Nikola Tulsa and Noah. Only because those true heroes did not contribute to bring in the New World Order. Now comes the touchy part. Religion. What about religion? What about the Bible? At least we have the Bible to fall back on, the Word of God, don't we? Or do we really? Let us think about it for a while. If the Bible and other holy scriptures from other religions as well is just a blueprint for the Illuminati agenda, how would that fit into the picture? You'll probably start getting upset and think I've gone too far, but at least give it a chance and ponder it. I'm not saying that what I suggest is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But consider the idea for a while. Evangelical Christians, for example, consider the Bible being the words of God and take it literally. But if we look at it and dig a little deeper, we notice that the New Testament, for one thing, is not unique. It seems like most cultures have a similar story to tell. How a saviour was born from a virgin, later killed, arisen from the dead with a promise to return in the future. Sounds more like occult symbolism instead of actual events. Also we know for certain that the Bible has been severely tampered with. The authorised King James Version. And the revision was supervised by Francis Bacon, among others. Bacon, who was a high initiate in several secret societies and a grand master of a Rosicrucian order, another occult society. King James himself was a prominent Freemason. Christians dispute this wholeheartedly, but the evidence speaks for itself. And what about the Book of Revelations? I don't know how many Christians have sent emails, but almost always point out that there is nothing we can do about this, because it is written in the Bible that this will happen. Antichrist will rule for a short time before the second coming of Christ. And there will be a rapture for the believers. There is no reason to intervene. Things will sort themselves out as part of God's great plan. And the war is already won, because God has already defeated Satan. Unfortunately, many people will suffer and die before peace comes, and this is inevitable, so the story goes.
What about if this is the ultimate deception? What about if the Bible is a symbolic blueprint given to the people as a holy scripture to follow literally? If this is true, what would the consequences be? The consequences would be that the religious people of the world would fail to intervene even if they saw the New World Order coming and understood the meaning of it. Illuminati priests would lead the sheep in the direction their man-made gods guides them toward death. This is the end Beautiful friend Doesn't this fit extremely well into the Illuminati agenda where religion keeps us in check and becomes a brilliant tool for keeping the population down, for easier control, no matter which religion you belong to, as they are all man-made? Now regarding Christianity, what about if this is what they want us to believe? The Antichrist will rise momentarily but will be defeated, followed by 1,000 years of peace. How about if there will be no rapture? and the world dictator will be set on the throne to rule over the united world without borders. In an ultimate dictatorship. This message must be read in every newspaper, heard on every radio, seen on every television. This message must resound throughout the entire interlink. I want this country to realize that we stand on the edge of oblivion. I want every man, woman and child to understand how close we are to chaos. I want everyone to remember why they need us. Open your eyes. We want to establish first that what we're not talking about is blue masonry or the Masonic lodges in your hometown. We're talking about a worldwide fraternal organization that is powerful enough, old enough, and wise enough to operate behind all governments in the world, behind fraternal institutions, monetary systems in the world, for instance, the idea that our country was founded by so many Freemasons and Rosicrucians, among others, the Freemasons that founded this country were members of the Scottish Rite, and in that Scottish Rite there is the Royal Arch degree, and of course the Royal Arch, if you do not know, was originally because of the sun coming over the horizon in the morning made the Royal Arch. The United States, as I said, founded in its constitution in Philadelphia. Pennsylvania becoming the keystone of a royal arch. What your government pays for, it gets. If you are paid to do something for the government, they will extract from you exactly what they have paid for. When we understand that, then we look at universities and schools, government financed institutions of education and see the kind of students and the kind of education that's being turned out by these government financed schools. Logic will tell you that if what is being turned out in those schools was not in accord with what the state and the federal government wanted, then it would change it. The bottom line is that the government is getting what they have ordered. They're getting what they have paid for. They do not want your children to be educated. They do not want you to think too much. That is why our country and our world has become so proliferated with entertainments, mass media, game shows, television shows, amusement parks, drugs, alcohol, and every kind of entertainment to keep the human mind entertained so that you don't get in the way of important people by doing too much thinking. You had better wake up and understand that there are people who are guiding your life and you don't even know it. And all American citizens, I think, have suspected something like this is going on. But we're all too busy trying to stay alive and live our lives. And after all, what can one person do about it? One person can do nothing, but a nation educated can do much. When Christians and others realize they have been deceived, it is too late. The Illuminati have already taken over. Many Christians would object and say the Illuminati hates Christians, and their goal is to destroy the Christian religion and kill all Christians. True, but don't they have to? If they invented the religion in the first place, a part of the propaganda would be just that, to hate Christians. This makes the whole saviour scenario look even more convincing. Still considering the Bible as an Illuminati blueprint, we can't leave out the Saturn-worshipping ancient Phoenician Canaanites, who were merchant bankers. I can imagine they were qualified enough to predict the cashless society so that their bloodline can manipulate people to this day. 
for ultimate control.